Today, we're gonna to be building a birdhouse. This is a good project for third graders and older. Uh, younger kids can do it, but they might need a little bit more help. This is a great way for you to spend some time with your student or your child. So we're gonna build our birdhouse and we're gonna make it completely out of one by six dimensional pine. And uh, we need about five feet of it. So before I start any project, I like to draw a picture so I know exactly what I'm gonna have in mind. I always ask students to make a plan before they start. So here's what our birdhouse is gonna look like. And I like to draw three-dimensionally. That's our basic, uh, that's what our, the front of the birdhouse is gonna look like. Now we have to think about how we're gonna attach the bottom and the sides. I would like to have a nice clean face and hide the sides and the base. So the base is gonna go behind the front piece and extend out the back. And then in the back, we're gonna have the uh, same piece as this. So, uh, there's our side piece. And that has some width to it too, right there. So the, the bottom piece is gonna, is gonna be hidden inside and there's gonna be a couple of screws in front to hold it here. And then there's gonna be a couple of screws here and here to hold the sides in. And there's also gonna be coming in from the back too. There's also gonna be some screws that go up from the base into the sides. Then we're gonna uh, have uh, uh, a roof and the roof is gonna overlap a little bit. So the roof's gonna look like this. And same thing over here. Now this, this side is gonna come up and meet there. That's gonna be our peak. And extend down that way. So that's what it's gonna look like. I'll race a little bit and you can get a better idea what's going on. So with our piece of one by six, the first thing we're gonna do is measure out uh, the front and the back. And there's a trick to do that. So let's say this is our piece of of one by six. Actually, let's talk about the one by six first. First of all, it's called one by six, but it's definitely not six inches wide. This works out to be about five and three eighths, but I'm gonna call it five and a half, just for, uh, just to make it a little bit easier. And it has a width on the side of about three quarters of an inch. When we're measuring our sides and trying to figure out how we go. We're gonna put three quarters at the bottom for the base. So I'm gonna say that's about three quarters of an inch. And then we want the sides to be five and a half on top. So this is three quarters. And then we want our sides are gonna go like this, looking at the front. Five and a half plus three quarters is six and one quarter. So that's where we're gonna to measure to right here. Six and one quarter. From there, we're gonna use a framing square to draw 45 degree angles from here and another one on this side. And that's gonna be the shape of the front of the birdhouse right there. You don't have to measure from here to here, because we're gonna let the 45 degree angles figure that out. Okay, got our piece of one by six, got our plan. Um, I'm using a pretty simple eighth inch ruler, easy for kids to understand. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure up six and a quarter on the side. Six, one quarter, I'm just gonna make a little line right at the edge. Um, I could, do the same thing over here and put a dot on this side. But I think it's great for kids to understand and learn how to use a, a tri-square or framing square. So, and draw to draw straight angles. Make sure that the edge is right up against the wood. And there's my dot right there. I can draw a line that goes all the way across. I'll put this piece on the inside. 
So now we have our line. Now we have to use the framing square to draw the angle for the roof. So I'm gonna tighten it up on the side. I'm gonna come over here. There's my dot right there for the edge. And I'm gonna draw a line that goes all the way across. Nice dark line, okay? Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. There's my dot. I'm gonna draw a line that goes all the way across. And that's gonna be the shape of my birdhouse. Now, I'm gonna, why not at the same time, I'm gonna measure out for the other piece. So we measured this to six and a quarter. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna measure to six and a quarter. Now I'm gonna draw a line over here. All right, I could do the sides and the bottom at this point, but I don't want to. So I wanna do these two pieces first because when you start to make too many measurements at once, one thing you'll find out is that the saw cuts things shorter. So uh, we'll talk later, it's a little bit more advanced about things like cutting outside the line. When you're working with kids, it's hard enough to get them to cut on the line. All right, we're gonna get set up on our, on our little sawhorse here. This is a child size sawhorse, but any sawhorse will do. But you have to keep in mind the kids are shorter and so they, something closer to the ground is easier for them to work on. One of my pet peeves is kids sawing into the saw bench. So check their setup and make sure that, uh, and adults, because adults come in here and saw into the saw benches too. Just help them get set up so they're not gonna saw off your, your board. We wanna make our first cut like this. So I'm gonna position this over here. So we have plenty of room not to miss. A kid will want to say like, well, I have to cut this one, so why don't I put this out here and cut this first? It's always nice to have more wood to clamp down on this end so it's not as wobbly. If you clamp here and you're cutting over here, the whole thing's gonna move. So we always try and clamp as close to the bench as possible. I got a clamping block. The clamping block is all chewed up. It's easy to explain. We use clamping blocks because we don't want all of these marks to get on our board from the C-clamp. How many things does a C-clamp do? Well, it does two things. It opens and closes. So, so often I see kids get frustrated. They think they're going the wrong way. And it's like, well, all you have to do is go the other direction. It gets tight and it gets loose. So I'm gonna position this over here so that I can make my first cut. Clamp it down tightly. So it doesn't wiggle. I'm going to, this is the instruction for kids, is uh, I'm gonna put the saw right on the corner there and I'm gonna press it in to get a starter. Makes a nice little chunk and then I pull it back three times to get it started. sawdust gets in your eyes. All right, here we go. Nice and straight. There you go. We're gonna have to trim those two pieces later. So actually, I'm gonna trim this one right now because it's all clamped down. kids carpentry teacher. Why aren't there any kids in the video? Well, we're not supposed to put kids in the videos. So that's the reason. But I work with kids all the time and they can definitely do this. So, 
like that. We've got two pieces. They're gonna go on our ends. They're the same size. They're a little, we're gonna do a little sanding on them before we put it together, but that's our two end pieces. So now we're gonna make the sides and the bottom, which are all gonna be exactly the same size. It doesn't really matter how big it is. I'm just gonna guess, I mean, it's, so I'm gonna say just kind of proportional. I'm gonna make mine six inches. And that should be enough of that. Maybe seven. Yeah, let's just do six inches. Uh, and uh, we're gonna measure and cut. So I know that you should measure and then cut and then measure and then cut. And the reason is because every time you use the saw, a little bit disappears. However, when you're working with third graders, that can get a little frustrating and I understand the frustration. So I'm gonna make my three pieces at the, at the same time. Six. Six. And six. I'm gonna use a tri-square to make these lines. The kids should learn how to use a tri-square. Uh, the handle needs to be tight up against the wood. It's a great fine motor skill for them to master. So uh, keep the handle up against the wood, find the line, and draw one line that goes all the way across. One line that goes all the way across. Okay. Size back bottom, we're gonna cut these now. Same deal as last time, make sure they don't saw the bench. Clamp down with a clamping block. I like to put the handle up so they know where, where that part of the handle is. If it's hiding underneath, you can't see it, and then you definitely don't want the saw to drag across there. Getting kids, or helping kids to cut straight lines takes a lot of patience. It's all about where their body is positioned and their upper body strength. Uh, try and reposition their body so that they're straight behind it and remind them to let the saw do the work and try and keep their hands straight. The saw will tell you if it's not going straight. It'll start squeaking and it'll get hard to use. When you're using a saw, it should go through the wood fairly easy. You can hold it with just a couple fingers and still get it to do the work. As soon as you start angling it, that's when it gets hard to use. And that's when it starts squeaking. So the saw will, I always say to the kids, the saw will tell you when it's not straight. So I got three pieces and they're all about the same size. Now's a good time for them to get their sanding block out, do a little cleanup, and then we're gonna start to put the pieces together. So just go over with a little sanding block just to get rid of the, the splinters. This next, uh, this next step is very basic, is how to attach sides. And it's a, it's, kids need to learn how to do it. It's a great way just to get them to understand how two pieces of wood can join together um, simply and very strongly. Whether you're making a box or anything, it's just the basic, uh, basic way to attach two pieces of wood. So, how to attach sides, here we go. So, uh, just quickly, so let's, this is an end. I want one piece to be the bottom, and I've got two sides, which are gonna fit like this. All right. And so we're gonna need to have some screws that will go through the front and back into the wood. And we're also gonna need a couple of some screws in the bottom, here and here, and here and here to attach those sides firmly. Here's step one. 
I'm gonna hold this piece of wood up here. You see what's going on? Okay. I'm gonna find the, line it up on the outside edge so it's smooth. Hold it tightly there, right on the edge. And with my pencil, I'm gonna trace the inside edge like that. Okay, there it is, see my line? And now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna put it on the edge and line it up and I'm gonna trace the inside edge. And I'm gonna do that over here too. Trace the inside edge. So now I know where the three pieces of wood are gonna attach. So the next step is that we want the screws to go right in the middle, okay? If they're too close to the edge, they'll break it. If they're too close to the inside, they'll split the wood. So we don't want that to happen. So we need to find the inside. I always said to tell kids, uh, how, you can estimate a line or a point somewhere in between here and here. And they're usually pretty good. They can usually figure out that this is a pretty good midpoint, right about there. And then they can use a ruler and kind of connect those lines. And that becomes their midpoint. Then we need two screws in each area. So I'm just gonna come down about a little, yeah, about an inch. And I'm gonna make a little cross line right there. And inch up. There. So now I know where those two screws are. So now I'm gonna repeat finding the midpoint for all three of these. Okay, I've got one side done. I'm gonna repeat the process here, exactly. Uh, I've already got this line drawn, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw on the side that has the line to keep the outside kind of nice, okay? Then I'm gonna have to do it for the bottom piece. So I'm gonna do the bottom piece right now. And I know I'm gonna have two sides like this and like this, right? So I'm just gonna trace the inside edge. Find the midline. Kids don't have to measure this every time. Sometimes you can teach them about like what they're, like the two fingers should be come out to about an inch in. So if they want to estimate and just use their two fingers, that's about an inch. It's good to talk about alternate ways of measuring things, estimating. Okay, so those two pieces are done. And really quickly, I'm just gonna do the last inside piece here. If you have older kids, you can teach them this trick. We have a great carpenter trick. Use your forefinger, put it right on the line, and then just draw a straight line down. They are amazed at the straight lines you can draw. All right. I now have these three pieces and we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step in the how to attach sides routine after you mark the crosshairs is to make a starter dent with a nail or a hammer. So it's pretty self-explanatory and uh, these are the ones that need it. So I've got a hammer and a finishing nail and you just need to make a little dent. And the reason you need to make a starter dent is when you use the drill, you don't want the, uh, the drill to slip around. That way it'll go exactly where you need it. So put the nail right on top of little crosshairs, tap it in a little bit and wiggle it around in a circle to make a nice starting net. You don't have to use a hammer and a nail, you can use an awl, aka a leather punch, and that goes quickly too. So it just depends. The hammer and the nail is good practice for fine motor skills. Um, and uh, doesn't really matter. You're just making a little dent in the wood.
The next step in the how to attach sides list is to pre-drill the hole. So uh, the pre-drill goes all the way through and I'm gonna use a, uh, a 1 8 inch bit and electric drill and I'm gonna clamp it down, clamp down my block so it doesn't fall off. I like to prefer this, so this job, put the handle down so that your hand doesn't smack up against the handle. And we have our two pre-drills, so this goes pretty quickly at this point. All the way through. All done on these three. The next step in how to attach size is to countersink. Now what the countersink looks like, this is a countersink bit. And uh, the countersink is gonna make a, a, a widen the hole so that when you put in our screw, uh, the screw goes into the wood flush and doesn't stick out. So when I do this, one side has uh, the lines drawn on it and the other one doesn't. I want to put the side that doesn't have the lines on the outside because it looks nicer than having all the lines that you drew. So you don't have to clamp down for this because the drill doesn't go all the way through. You can just kind of hold the boards in place. And people always ask how far you should go in. I'll show you, I'll show you in a second. So I'm just gonna put that countersink. You want to go, you want to countersink, countersink deep enough so that the head of the screw fits all the way in. But you don't want to go so deep that it goes all the way through and doesn't allow the wood to grab something. So I'm just going to finish countersinking. All right. And now I'm ready to start putting them together. I'm ready to, to assemble the body of the birdhouse. Um, I've got my five pieces. I've got tight bond glue. I'm just gonna use some drywall screws. These are uh, six by one and five eighths drywall screws. They're just the cheapest things in the world. And uh, they're really meant for indoor use only, but for this birdhouse, it's more than enough. And as a matter of fact, I use these for pretty much everything that we make with kids. And I have a Phillips screw tip for the drill. All right, I'm gonna start with the, you have to attach the bottom first here. I'm gonna spread some glue. If you're working with a, a if you're working with a little kid, they're definitely gonna need an extra set of hands to put this together and line everything up because it's really hard to do when your hands are small. But this piece is gonna go, I wanna make sure that I put the outside on the bottom. So this piece is gonna go like this. And here's a little, just a little trick makes things easier. Just twist the screw in a little bit just to get it started so it doesn't wiggle around. If you just put the screw into a hole like that and it's floppy, it makes it so much harder to get the drill. So if the screw is not gonna wiggle, it's gonna make it a lot easier for them. Make sure the drill's on the low setting. And the first one's always the hardest. Nice. 
Doesn't really matter what order you put it on. I'm just putting the sides on first just because. The birdhouse has come together. I don't want to put the roof on yet because I'm going to drill a hole for the uh, for the bird, and we're also going to put a hole for the peg. Okay, we're going to put the the hole in for the bird, and also the dowel. I want to make sure it's in the middle, so I'm going to use my framing square, and I can use the, the point up here to find the middle. Kind of draw a super light line down the middle. I don't know where the middle is. I kind of want the hole. This is a, a 1 and 11 16 hole saw, so I want the middle to be right about there. And then the, the dowel for the rest is going to go here. Anyway, I'm going to clamp this down because when you use this guy, especially with little kids, this thing is going to just spin around if it's not clamped down. So I'm going to clamp this down right here, edge of the bench. Make a starter dent. Kids get a free donut. All right, so there's that hole. And then I'm gonna use a, a quarter inch dowel for the little stick that sticks out. So I'm just gonna guess and say, doesn't really matter. Maybe right about there. Quarter inch drill bit. And it can go all the way through. I don't need to go all the way in, so. Line it up right there. Two last big pieces I need to cut are for the roof. And I want the roof to hang over a little bit. So I'm gonna say nine inches, why not? That's about three quarters hanging over and on each side. This is the Baco Superior saw that we use with our kids, crosscut saw. And uh, uh, everybody from first grade through eighth grade can use it. Okay, I have the two pieces of the roof cut. Just gonna move real quick. So now I need to mark where the lines are gonna go. And the first piece I'm gonna put down and I'm gonna just kind of, I'm just gonna, oof. I'm gonna kind of eyeball where it belongs with three quarters of an inch hang over here. And I want it right up the top. And now I'm gonna trace the inside edges here. So there's my lines. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find the middle and draw a line up the middle. And I'm gonna find a couple crosshairs about an inch from the, each end. All right, so that's the first piece. That's gonna go directly right up top like this. Okay, now the second piece is a little bit different because it's gonna be sitting up on top of the other piece. And I want to put some screws in this direction into this piece of wood. So first thing I'm gonna do is mark the top of this one.
Got that line. Now I'm going to find the middle here. My line is there. About one inch in, right about there, right about there. And then I'm going to trace the lines over here. So this piece is going to stick out a little bit more because it's hanging over. Like that, like that. I can trace the same edges. And there. So this one is going to get six holes, and this one is going to get four. To put one eighth drill bit back in. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and give it a counter sink. Screw tip back in. All right, I'm going to put the one that does not go over the, uh, the one that's flush. I'm gonna do that one first. This is the one that's gonna go even with the top edges. It's a little tricky because you can't see where exactly where you're going, so you just kind of look from the top, help the kid hold it. I'm gonna position it so I can see right on top. Once you get one in, that's the first one is the hardest, so take your time. I'm just gonna kind of hand clamp it there. Low speed. Adjust it, make sure it's nice and smooth. So you can see that one was the one that was flush. Now the next one's gonna go up and the next one's gonna go all the way across like that, at the top. This one's gonna be a lot easier to put on. Need to line it up at the top. All right, he's looking pretty good. Definitely looks like a birdhouse. Needs one last feature. We drilled a quarter inch hole right here. I've got a quarter inch dowel. I'm just gonna, it's gonna go in there. No. Figure out how long to make the dowel. Maybe that long. The birdhouse is finished. And it looks like a birdhouse. I don't know if a bird would actually live in it, but your student or kid will love making this with you. So this birdhouse is basically finished. Of course, I would tell the kids now they need to sand a lot and they can use a rasp and clean it all up, clean up the edges. They should make it beautiful. They should paint it. They should put their own expression. They need to clean up all of the, all of the splinters hanging around the edges and the rough edges. They need to clean up this. They really can do a lot of work. 
how they decorate it, it was really up to them, but it's done. So here's what I used. I used, I used about four feet, or actually four and a half feet of one by six. We had one and five eighths inch screws. We had a C-clamp. We had a tri-square and a framing square. We had a ruler, and this is this one goes to quarter inches, but you can use that or you can use a tape measure, whatever you want to teach your kid to use. Nippers, a hole punch. We used a quarter inch drill, we used a eighth inch drill, and we used a countersink, and we used a Phillips uh, head drill, and an electric drill, and a hole saw. So that's pretty much it. I think if you're working with a kid, you can probably do this whole project in three or four hours if you're safe. Take your time, enjoy spending time with your kids.